Good afternoon, Nancy Juarez with the Center on Juvenile and Criminal Justice. I understand that Title 24 is not retroactive, but I'd like to uplift that all counties are receiving $225,000 per young person returning to their county. Through the closure of DJJ, in just this fiscal year alone, counties as a whole received $118 million, and that is expected to double next year. 225K per young person, 118 mil just this year. We have to do better than just painting the walls purple. As the panelist Rachel Gibbs shared, their language has changed over the years, and California's language has also changed over the years, but our practice hasn't. We don't say solitary confinement anymore. We say safety rooms, but young people are still in them for 23 hours a day. We don't say punishment. We say positive youth development. But until we put standards in place that keep young people connected to their families, to their village, until we stop kidnapping youth from their communities, words will just be words. Youth need and deserve privacy. They deserve intentional rest. I urge this committee to review county's attempts to create alternatives to juvenile hall. For example, San Francisco offered Edgewood as alternative to the juvenile hall. But according to Title 24, the corridors were too small because Title 24 says the corridors have to be eight feet wide. How can we change the standards to ensure that attempts like San Francisco's aren't boxed out in this process? So I encourage you all to review different counties that have attempted to find alternatives. And thank you.